The end of the track is this. A pretty solid lamppost. Now, the only thing that's going to make the impact here kind of bearable is this crumple zone. The idea of a crumple zone on this cart, or in fact any vehicle, is to kind of bend, and the bending metal absorbs some of the energy of the impact. Nonetheless, it's not going to be a wholly pleasant experience for the fella in the hot seat. I've, uh, I've kind of calculated this, so it should give a similar crash profile to maybe hitting a lamppost in a real car in an urban environment. I've carefully designed and built this rig to be repeatable and predictable. Tests make me confident I'll walk away from this. What we don't know is exactly how my body will behave in the crash, so I'm going to gauge the effects using a high-speed camera and a big green pressure-sensing pad. I wouldn't recommend this. Um, I am a little nervous. I'm forward-facing. I'm heading for a solid steel bar. How bad can it be? Here we go. Three. One. Yeah, it's definitely an impact. The crumple zone does its job, smoothing the intensity of the impact as I go from 16 miles an hour to zero in a tenth of a second. It still hurts. The harness holds my body nicely, but my head gets viciously thrown forwards. But how will the reverse feel? I don't think that a helmet would be helpful here, so I'm relying on the padding of the headrest to cushion the blow. See why kids hate being put in their car seats so much. Let's do it. That was like a proper shock, but I feel okay. Going backwards felt better, but what will the cameras and pressure sensor reveal? White and blue areas correspond to little or no pressure. Red areas are the highest pressure we're seeing. OK, and this is then quite obviously when I was going forwards, and you can see the straps are digging into my shoulders and digging in quite a lot around my waist. Correct. Whereas going backwards, the, the, the whole force of the impact is distributed quite evenly over most of my back, which is why there's less kind of digging into me. And there's a little bit down at the bottom there, but on the whole, even though quite scary, going backwards is broadly a more comfortable way to crash. During forward-facing collisions, it's very common for seat belts to cause abdominal injuries. But the more serious threat for children is to their necks. And to see why that is, I need to look at the high-speed footage. OK, there's the moment of impact. Ooh. There's an awful lot of movement in my head, and my head only really comes to a stop when eventually my neck won't stretch any further. Right, see what it's like going backwards. Oh. Right, well, going backwards, the kind of overall movements I experienced meant that my neck never sort of went out of its comfort zone. It was only moving within its kind of normal range. Whereas forward facing, it was a different story. And it makes me think that overall, from the pressure results, from the high speed and from my own experience, that traveling backwards in a crash is probably safer.